So far, we've just been displaying static data that the user hasn't interacted with. In this lesson, we'll learn about Svelte's reactivity system and let our users interact with our app by selecting Pokemon. So first, we're gonna learn how to make these elements interactive. So we'll go to our monster element and we'll use on colon click. And then we'll give that a function and so we'll do something super simple. And so what this is going to do is when we click on this, it will call that function, which gives us an alert. And this is giving us a accessibility error because we should make it so that if you hit a key, it can also do the action uh, for people who can't use a mouse. For the sake of simplicity, We'll go ahead and ignore this error, but in production app, you should not ignore it. All right, so back to our alert. So we could also feed in data to this function. So we could go hello from, and then do the monster.name. So now we're saying hello from Charmander. Cool. Of course, a lot of time we want to call longer functions. And so we'll want to reference something to find elsewhere. So we're gonna create something called monster click and define that here. And we'll start off with just uh, no arguments and we'll do an alert, hello from monster. And then we'll see that when we click it, it calls this function. Cool, and we can also feed in a monster and to do that here we're just feeding it in the function but to feed in the monster we need to make it an anonymous function right here so we can give it an argument and now we'll say hello from monster.name so that's how we interact with elements now let's look at how we can change data so let's say let count equals zero right and now when we click the monster instead of putting an alert we do count plus equals one so we're adding one to the count and then we'll go ahead and in h1 put in our count so we've got zero here and now every time we click it goes up by one you'll notice we didn't have to do anything special here in other frameworks, you'd have to do something like ref and then call dot value or something, or use state and then have a special set count property that you have to use here. But in Svelte, you can just do this and it works just fine. Next, we'll go over declarations or what in many other frameworks are called computed properties. So here we defined double count we've put a dollar sign colon before it and then we have the definition of it and so what makes the declaration special is that whenever the count goes up let's go ahead and put in the double count here whenever the count goes up the double count is updated in line with it so we don't have to do double count plus equal two it just computes what the correct value is based on the changing count we can also use statements or what are in other frameworks called watchers. So we'll just go ahead and say the count is that. And when we says zero to start out and now whenever the count changes, it will give us an alert about what the count is. We can put if statements here. And so we can do it only if the count is greater than five. And if the count is greater than five, we can multiply it by two as well. So we are now at five. All right. So that is the basics of the reactivity system. Let's go ahead and use it in something more relevant to our app. We'll start by letting something called monster ID, and it'll be null at first and then we'll display the monster ID. So no monster ID, but if we click the monster, then let's go ahead and, all right, 
that should work. And now we click and it's showing the ID of the monster. We want to show the entire monster. So we can do a declaration of the monster and then we can use the data.monsters to find it based on the monster ID. And here now in our H2, we'll find our monster.name. And it appears there's an error and that's because uh, if there's nothing there, then you can't find a name on it. So we'll do monster question mark dot name. Cool. Awesome. And this is better than just setting the monster directly like that because an ID is a lot easier to pass than a whole lot of data. And it's really useful to be able to pass an ID and then recreate sets of data from that. We'll see that in the next video where we'll be passing the ID into the query params and then showing the selected monster based on that. So that's the reactivity part. Before we go, we need to fix some of these type errors. So we'll start with the monster ID. It doesn't like not knowing what type it is. So we can call it a string type. And then we'll go ahead and get rid of the null since this will accept an undefined but not a null. And the behavior is the same. And then for this monster, it really wants to know uh, what type it is. And we can't just do something like this because that's just an empty object. What we can do, so we have this type of monster that is incomplete and not perfectly named. So this is actually an API monster. So this is the monster that we get back from the API. Meanwhile, the uh, index monster, and I'm calling an index monster because there's going to be a full monster later that has a lot more data. So the index monster is basically the API monster plus so we do that and to add stuff, plus an ID and an image. And then we can say, all right, these are index monsters. Cool, so now we already know what one of these things is. See, the number there went down from two errors to one because now we know that what's returned from data is an array of index monsters instead of an array of any. That's pretty cool. And we can also export this so that we can call it here. And so we'll import the type. And now all our errors are gone. And TypeScript knows exactly what we're wanting to do. So now you know the basics of interactivity and reactivity in Svelte. This is a core building block of the framework. So we're going to be seeing these concepts in ever more interesting ways as we continue this series.